Hey guys. Hello. What do you call an alligator in a vest? Uh, um, I quit scraping the bottom of the barrel. An investigator. Ha! Hi <laughs> Now we've lost all of our listeners, thanks, Ruth. Why is that funny? <laughs> Welcome to the show! Woo! Woo! <laughs> let's, let's, do it, let's do it like a proper like, late night, like, woo! Woo! Applause! <laughs> Yay! Thank <laughs> you for that completely forced, totally non-forced applause. <laughs> Make up your mind, Greg. Forced or non-forced. Both. Um... I wanted to talk about, um, so there's a lot of TV coming up that I'm very excited about. Some of it's already started. You told me you didn't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm very disappointed because that was your homework for the show this week. Uh, I did not get that memo. I am very keen to watch it. I've been excited about it for quite some time. I was going to watch it tonight over a glass of red. I watched it. I don't don't really know what to think. Like... It was good, but some of the characters kind of annoyed me. Well, it's the first episode. They have they haven't fleshed out everybody yet. No, I I know, I know. I'm I'm I know, it's the first episode, so that, you know, we have to, we should expect that, but I'm I am curious to see where it's going to go from here. I liked that British girl. It wasn't you, Fran. It was some other British girl, but oh, thank I thought you she was Scottish. Scottish. Thank you for clarifying. Was that. she British or Scottish? I don't think they were British. Well, no, the girl <laughs> of He's British. Well, yeah, technically. (laughs) Well, yeah, technically. (laughs) I meant her accent. She had a different accent. She reminded me of you, but she had a different accent. Oh, okay. (laughs) I think, no, I mean, I've heard heard mixed things about the pilot. I think one of the things that you have to bear in mind with Joss Whedon in particular is, like, it, and like he's a, he's a great writer. Yeah, everyone but, has to keep in mind that this is a Joss Whedon production. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? this is like so my I, first Joss Whedon show, really. But I I think that like his writing when it's not so good can veer into kind of smugness. Um, oh yeah. Until, until it kind of finds its feet, I guess. Um, like Doll Dollhouse, for instance, didn't work at the beginning. That took a long time to kind of you know develop a real voice. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will, you know, just be the same, really. It'll just take a while to I, develop. I think if we all judged shows solely by their pilot, I think, like, nobody would like shows like South Park as much as they do. Or The Simpsons. The pilot for South Park is, like, awful. <laughs> really? The, I, the pilot for The Simpsons is awful. Like, every, a lot of pilots, like, do not work and yeah first if first we judge theater were awful if we judge shows solely based on their pilot we would not have a lot of tv that we like today you make a really good point Greer. You do. airplanes if you judge them solely by their pilot you are doing a reasonable job it was better than your joke Greer. <laughs> yeah, i know yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Zing. But no, you should have done your homework and watched Shield because that is it's really good. It was good. Well, they didn't they say that like uh, they're not going to show another episode next week, but like next next week. They might only because it's football season. So, so yeah, I would not be surprised. Up, yeah. <laughs> Can I just ask you both to clarify America's weird mid-season breaks that come. At seemingly random times like you'll have like three or four episodes of a season and then there'll be like three or four weeks when there's just nothing i assume they do it just to build anticipation i i don't know it's either it's either the the actual show is on break or on you know some especially talk shows do this like kind of near july or august they'll go on like a month long break or like a month and a half long break and, you know, even shows, you know, they'll do that as well. Like, uh, scripted shows will do that because the show is just on break or whatever. And, and then sometimes it's because of the sports seasons. Like, 
see, you couldn't do that with British shows because they all last about three episodes. What? Yeah, I know, like Sherlock or whatever. Yeah. Three episodes? Huh? Yeah, it was, I was exaggerating for effect. <laughs> well, it worked. I was going to say, then Doctor Who's been cheating a lot. Three episodes? <laughs> three episodes? <laughs> That's how that sounds in American accent. Oh, good. Well, I got my license. Oh, you did? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, I got my driver's license this week. That's so. awesome. So, like, is that is that like a provisional thing? Do you still have to take the test or what? No, I took the test and so I you, passed. You have to take yes, a Yes, I, I got the actual thing and I'm like, I don't know, I'm so excited. So I've been sort of partying this weekend <laughs> with, so, like, my phone. And my boyfriend. Yeah. I don't even know whether I'm ever going to learn to drive. Like, particularly now I'm in London, like, the public transport here is so good, um, and the traffic is so immense. Um, I know, that's the thing. And, and, like, some cities, you don't really need to drive, you know? Like, yeah. like New York City, people don't bother. <laughs> yeah, like, like she said, in New York City, like, nobody drives there. It's all public transportation. Yeah, well, yeah, the UK, um, London, rather, is the same. Um, yeah, nobody drives in England. You know, we still have horse and carriage over here. Oh, okay, yeah. For yeah, the rich so. people, for like the Downton Abbey like people. Downton Abbey, the yeah. <laughs> we around in the mud like the fucking serfs we are. <laughs> Dude, Downton Abbey was nominated for so many Emmys. <laughs> what? It's like the pretentious show of the year or whatever. It's fucking terrible, Downton Abbey. It's crap. That's what I told my really? mom. I said, <laughs> I said my English friend says basically they churn out this crap in England and in Europe, like, all the time, and then somehow this show got popular in this country, and it's pretty much the only reason is because people watch it to feel classy. Oh, God, completely. I mean, no. Wow. <laughs> Period dramas over here are ten a penny. Like, and I just assumed it was the same everywhere. Have you but... wa- actually watched the show? Some people do. Some people really like it, but no, it's... No, have it's... you seen an episode of the show? Oh, I yeah, have. I have, yeah. I've seen little bits here and there. But, you know, nobody... Nobody thinks it's classy over here. Everyone, it's generally considered to be the case that it is a bit of, like, fluff. Like, every, every like, critic here is like, oh, Downton Abbey's brilliant. It's, like, the best show. It's brilliant. It was nominated <laughs> for, like, it was nominated for Outstanding Drama next to, like, Breaking Bad and Homeland and Game of Thrones. <laughs> I mean, wow. those shows could eat Downton Abbey for breakfast. Breaking with- Bad did win, so... Oh awesome breaking bad one did it yeah yeah that makes sense which means i need to start watching breaking bad because i think the finale is tonight like the series like it's all ending tonight oh then you're just in time rare yeah (laughs) (laughs) i i haven't watched any breaking bad everyone i know loves it apart from one really good friend of mine who thinks it's massively overrated i mean i you know i i like most of these big long-running american dramas like and I've heard incredibly good things about Breaking Bad, and I love Brian Cranston. I Brian Cranston's such... awesome. I just know him because he does a lot of parodies and skits and stuff. He and Malcolm talk shows. Fucking hilarious. Oh. Yeah, he's really funny. On Malcolm in the Middle, he had a hairy back. Yeah, he was, he was on Malcolm in the Middle. And he did have a hairy back. Malcolm in the Middle, Ew. I still fucking love that show. My mom does, too. It's, it's brilliant. Everyone... <laughs> And I think uh, Brian Cranston was on, um, he was on, like, Conan or something like that, and uh, Conan said one of the theories he found on the internet is mm-hmm. that uh, in the last episode, like, they're gonna take Walter White, which is his character, they're gonna take him and his family through witness protection, and they're gonna rename him, and Bre- so Breaking Bad is basically a prequel to Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> Because he goes through witness protection and changes his name and gets a new family and stuff. That would be incredible. That would be so wow. good. <laughs> um, but, I mean, no, Malcolm in the Middle, like, it didn't even get a DVD release or anything. Like, it's baffling. Because it was such Wait, a... Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Look it up. Look it up. There are no Malcolm in the Middle DVDs. It is a show that... I'm has... really surprised. Yeah, that's, got a big, that's still got a big fan base. Wow. Oh, it really, it really has, and it, it's just gone off into the ether. I mean, I mean, it's really weird. I don't know what they've got on it, but 
Yeah. You know, they they show it on um those aren't on DVD. Like I've talked about this with some friends. Are there like some Nick shows that need to be on DVD? And that like because like there's really no reason not to. You would make so much money. Like Oh like, yeah, I mean totally. Like things like Hey Arnold and Arthur, like I mean, I don't know, but I don't think they have DVDs. And, like, those shows... Probably like, got bootleg. That's about it, if you're lucky. I know, I know it took Rocco's Modern Life, like, forever to go on DVD. Oh, yeah. I had to, I bought a bootleg se- uh, series just because I didn't feel like waiting. It's just, it's just so silly sometimes, like, copyright shit or other, you know, stupid legal stuff. When it's yeah. like, when you're sitting on a gold mine! Well, yeah, precisely. I mean, yeah, they would make... Yeah, Rocco's Modern Life, like Animaniacs, Hey Arnold, um, like Ren and Stimpy must have made a shitload on DVD sales. Yeah, just, I don't know. <laughs> Legal people, stop messing these things up. Oh, man, do you know what I read on Cracked earlier? Mm. What? Apparently in the States now, to, because I mean, anti-piracy laws are insane, and commercials for anti-piracy are insane and the scaremongering tactics they use and all those things and it's just as insane over here as it is in america but i've heard that over in america now what they're doing is introducing anti-piracy classes in schools <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Obviously, you've got to read the article and, and just that's the kind really of like funny that's like that's like almost like a dare program because it's like you know don't do these things and we're going to show you what they are Oh, I mean, it's it's straight out of the pages of Dare, of the Dare oh the my drug God, thing, that's yeah. Really funny. I'm an idiot. I, I filled out a job application today, and it asked me, because it's for a company that works with technology, I'm not going to name it, but uh, it's... Oh, why not? Because... Be, no, but uh, they, one of the questions on the application that I, I was going through an assessment test, but one of, one of the questions asked me... Like, have you ever done anything against the law through a piece of technology such as downloading illegal content, et cetera, et cetera? And I'm like, and it, things that could be considered a felony. And I'm like, no, nope, never, yeah. never have in my entire life downloaded illegal content. <laughs> Jesus, bro. That is horseshit. Never in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> you... Billy Bullshitter. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the Emmys again, only because I'm really angry because Game of Thrones, between the primetime and the Creative Arts Emmys, Game of Thrones was nominated for 16 awards and didn't win one. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's just bad luck. I thought Peter Dinklage had the Emmy, but nope. He, he won the Emmy. Uh, instead of him, <laughs> yeah, that was mean. I think it was... Because he's so short. Sure. Who won a I, mean. I have no idea who won a soap or Dinklage. Also, yeah, Louis C.K. It's so funny to me when stuff gets like multiple nominations and they don't win anything. Yeah. It's just, it's like, you know, you, you want to win at least something and they don't get anything and you, you gotta feel bad for them, you know? Yeah, like, I'm just really like, nothing? That's so bad. Many times the, ol- no- the only thing in the Emmys that I genuinely really did agree with was um, that in the movie miniseries movie or miniseries categories behind the candelabra won almost everything and i'm like yes i have to see that behind the candelabra is so good it is very very good it came out at the cinema over here we did really it was only on hb it's only on hbo so cool yeah did um sharknado win anything no (laughs) it won best movie ever it won best movie ever (laughs) Yeah, for, I can't wait for the, to hear about the sequel. I can't wait. Sharknado 2? Yeah, they're already uh, filming it. It's gonna be great. Yeah, do you know what it's called? It's called Sharknado 2, the second one. Whoa! <laughs> the second one, that is the greatest title. I know, I'm so excited. I'm just, <laughs> it's gonna be hilarious. There better be more chainsaws. <laughs> no, but seriously, Behind the Candelabra, wonderful film. Yeah, I really... If anybody watch- doesn't know, it's about Michael Douglas playing Liberace and Matt Damon is his lover, Scott, that he had for a long, long time. And, like, uh, he it's based off a book that the actual guy wrote. And, like, Liberace had gotten him plastic surgery to look like him and adopted Ooh. him. And it was, like, really weird. And they had, like, this really weird relationship. But... Liberace got his lover plastic surgery so that he could look like Liberace. Yeah. Oh. 
So does that mean? So is that considered narcissism then? A little. It's Ooh. weird the way they do it in the movie. They're like, because Matt Damon's character is like, uh, okay, I, I, I guess Lee. All right, you know, it's. That movie's so good. Michael Douglas is really good in it. And Michael Douglas won the Emmy, and it's very well-deserved. Yeah. He's a sex addict, apparently. Michael Douglas? Yeah, you should come around my house. Oh, yeah. Whoa! Hello! Okay, I'm so confused about him and Catherine Zeta-Jones, because are they broken up or not? They're separated. They're separated? They are now. Now Doug Walker's on the prowl looking for her. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, because in his in his acceptance speech, he said in his in his in his acceptance speech at the Emmys, he said, "I'd like to thank my wife, Catherine." And I said, "Wait a second. And this was on Sunday, like last yeah. Sunday. And I said, "Wait a second. <laughs> Are they? I'm every single thing on the front of every single magazine I see is like Catherine Zeta Jones and Michael Douglas. They're nasty breakup." <laughs> Maybe I was just trying to be nice. I don't know. I had this image of you, Greer, of actually being at the Emmys and standing up and being like, hey, wait a minute. Didn't you guys? (laughs) (laughs) Michael Douglas, I'm going to let you finish, but you. (laughs) I'll let you finish, but I thought you and Catherine Zeta were over. (laughs) What? (laughs) Your other wife? Your other wife. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Didn't Michael Douglas also say something weird about, like, throat cancer a while ago i saw about that on the soup it was so he said he got throat cancer from doing too much oral sex or something yeah and it's like you know it's like i'm it's like he's covering up playing live that's that's such a man that's such a i I feel like that's such an excuse a typical guy would come up with it totally is (laughs) i mean even if that is true it's still like that's something my dad would come up with or something yeah he's just eating so much pussy that it gave uh, too much pussy gives you cancer. Too much Catherine Zeta Jones vagina. <laughs> Hear that, Doug Walker? You're gonna get cancer. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Oh fuck, his mom might have had cancer or something. That might really not be funny to him. <laughs> apparently, um, apparently, like, um, like wanking, um, can turn you blind. Oh yeah, back th- that was a thing back in like the fifties. They were like, yeah, if you masturbate, you'll go blind. And grow hair on your palm. Right? Yeah. And you'll die. And you'll, you'll die. get pregnant and die. <laughs> wow. You'll fall, you'll fall over is... and drop dead with a boner. The most awesome and factually accurate sex education ever. Yeah. Ever. I remember when we, when, uh, let's talk about sex, because that's like a hot topic, like sex education in schools. Let's get deep. Okay. <laughs> like, oh my. I remember, um, I... in, in, it was like freshman year in high school is when we did sex education, and uh, I remember. Yes, so, I just translate. That's uh, how old are you in freshman year? Like fourteen or fifteen. I don't remember. But uh, right. but uh, the only thing I don't remember anything from that class. I don't remember anything we learned except that the teacher had this huge stuffed sperm that he would throw at us. <laughs> oh. What? He would throw the sperm. It was called Spunky, by the way. And he would throw it at us. Conservative. Yeah, I don't know. And that's how he explained what sperm does. And that's the only thing I remember from that class. It's massive and it flies in your face (laughs) when you're seen from your teacher. Really? Yeah, you don't want to catch spunk from your teacher. Yeah. No, that is that is a bad touch. How sex okay. how sex education in uh in England? Well, all I remember really is it being kind of I don't know, just very sort of half assed. Like you'd have these kind of lessons, yeah, I guess around the same age, maybe like thirteen, fourteen, and like that would be like a kind of rudimentary stick figure of a man and a woman or no, maybe not a stick figure, but like a rudimentary cartoon or an animation. I'm and just picturing like stick figures doing it. <laughs> just doing it right up the asshole. Um, but no, I mean, it was more like, you know, they point out the various kind of parts of the body and say, and when the man, you know, you know, feels it's the right time to, um, uh, put his penis in the woman's vagina like the language was a lot more technical than that by the way yeah <laughs> but so yeah it was it was i mean it, nothing really to tell really it was just a bit crap it was all the same stuff that you used to hear on the playground yeah, um yeah. 
And it didn't explain any of the, like, I think they need to not be afraid to talk to kids about, like, doing it when the time is right for you and about falling in love and being safe. And I kind of feel like sex education, or at least when I was in school, it was just it was something they had to tick off the list, but they didn't really kind of understand what it was for or how to do it right. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember... People are just too uncomfortable talking about sex. You know? Like, like yeah. these days, they're basically, like, saying, like, you should not have sex instead of teaching them how to have safe sex. Just don't have sex yet, you know? <laughs> I know. Like, they're gonna do it. You just, you know, should make sure that if they are they're do gonna it. do it, you know... I think of it's course we're gonna do it. That's ridiculous. why we have all these stupid teen pregnancy shows. I think it's ridiculous. Oh, you know how, like, That's why I'm 14 and have a baby. Yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous how you like my brother, who's still in high school, would not be able to go to the nurse's office and say, "Can I have a condom?" Yeah, that's terrible. Which they I should do. I think they should. I, I, think I if in some it, places they give condoms away. Yeah, you know? I mean, but not it's. I think you know, in high school, it should be something that is there instead of keeping it away from them. It should be there, you know. I mean, yeah, not, not, they're not. They should. They're not advocating it by having them. They're not advocating it or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, but you know, the alternative is is that people are going to do it and then are going to either get pregnant or get ill or, you know. Yeah. And- that is obviously not preferable. I mean, I think the thing is, is like, yeah, people probably are having sex too young. And, you know, that 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 is sad. It's sad that people feel like they need to grow up too fast. I mean, beyond all the kind of boring religious implications and what have you, like, people shouldn't feel pressured to have sex. But, uh, I, yeah, I think the option to do it safely, you know, because teenagers are inherently reckless, should be there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about more sex. Cause we're, uh, we're a girl sex. show. We're a girl show. We can talk about sex. Yeah, totally. And periods. Yeah, really. Uh, and periods. And periods. Um. So, who, so, so who's a virgin? Who's a virgin? Um, <laughs> well, I had sex yesterday, so I don't think it's me. Oh yay! I guess. <laughs> congrats. Okay. I've been partying this weekend. <laughs> No, I mean, honest, like, cards on the table answer. Um, I'm not a lady virgin, but I am a man virgin. Oh. Yeah. Cool. No, well, I've never, I've never, I mean, my, my thing is I've never wanted to, I've never wanted to, you know, do it with somebody that I haven't loved. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a perfectly respectable choice. I'm going to be your therapist for I, a second. I, Fran, have you loved... No. <laughs> no. That was such a therapist question. Jeez, <laughs> you've never loved. Why not? I've, I've well, I've just never, I've never met somebody that I've fallen in love with. You know, I mean, I think, and I, yeah, and I think for me, like that's always been a deal breaker. Like I've done other stuff and I've enjoyed it. Um, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm, you know, when I go on dates and I meet people I'm active but yeah that has always always been where I've drawn the line because it is such a profound experience and I'm I'm okay with waiting until I meet the right person for that that's really sweet Fran and I I I support that oh well thank you very much yeah I mean I I think I mean I I've never really had I've I've had sex with people I love but not like you know just because because I know some people do and I've I've never done that not because like I didn't want to I just I don't know. I just didn't see appeal to me. You know, I'd rather just. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to me, it's a bit like, I mean, and again, it's different for different people. But yeah, to me, yeah. it was always a bit like why I didn't smoke. Like I didn't have any moral implication against it, but I didn't have that urge to do it. And I didn't have the urge to sleep with people that I didn't love. You know, I didn't have that. You know, it got to that point and it was like, oh, I don't want to. You know, I just don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I remember my mom broke it to me that uh, for the longest time, or for for uh, for about a year when I was in high school, she legitimately thought that I was a lesbian because I was not interested in guys at school. And I said, Mom, the only reason I was not interested in guys in high school was because every single guy I encountered in high school was either a poser gangster or chewed tobacco. <laughs> or both. Ow. <laughs> 
Or <laughs> were my friend and I had no interest in them like that at all. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, some people like... I mean, I, I do have a bit of a problem in that, you know, I either... I look at guys that are kind of, you know reasonably well known um in the public eye or tv characters and i think oh why can't i meet a guy like them and when your standards are that specific you're a bit fucked yeah and you talk a little i'm probably never gonna meet a chris hemsworth in my lifetime but you know <laughs> i can i can still watch interviews of him with tight t-shirts on and pretend to rub my hand down his chest Oh my! You know, absolutely. Oh my! And I mean, yeah, I can, I can still, you know, I can still have a glass of wine and watch John Oliver clips. And <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you, John. I love you. Um, and yes. you know, it's fine. I can enjoy that. Um, I mean, I, you know, in all seriousness, I think it is just, you know, because I mean, there probably are, you know, I know we do have some younger listeners, and I think, uh, you know, we my have, we have my, listeners. <laughs> We have yes. young listeners. What are you doing here? Go, go outside. Go outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, d- d- go, g- go, like play stickball and. <laughs> but like, if if you are if you are choosing to be nerds inside and listen to this, which you know, like me, you probably are. Mm-hmm. Um, I yeah. would say you know it's just that balance between. You know, yeah, you're probably never going to meet a guy like the cartoon or anime character that you have a crush on. But at the same time... (laughs) Yeah, sorry, Greer, you're not going to meet those swimming guys. I'm not going to meet anyone from swimming anime. But at the same time, you should meet for somebody that you... You should wait for somebody that you genuinely are excited about and is interesting to you and... You know, it, it's just about striking a balance between not expecting them to be your ideal, but also waiting for the right person. Yay. Yay. <laughs> tell us about, Georgia, tell us about your partner, because you've been with him for a while, haven't you? Oh, Joe? Um, yeah, actually, oh my god, actually, in like, around Thanksgiving, we've all been together for a year. <laughs> oh, blimey. Are you going to have, like, a anniversary type thing or I don't know what we're gonna do um hopefully it's gonna be something fun and knowing him it'll probably involve him cooking something really awesome he, he loves to cook oh well that's a good trait a man it. that loves to cook keep him <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm really i'm not that good at cooking <laughs> well that's that's ideal i mean my dad's really more of a cook than my mum, so you know it ha- yeah it happens i mean what do you i mean are you are you able to share all the kind of is he into the nerdy stuff as well or is that not really his thing or he's into his own nerdy things like he's the one who got me into D and D. Oh, really? that's cool. Yeah, he he has his own nerdy stuff. He does he does that and um, I don't know. Like he got me into South Park and uh, he he yeah he has um and we both we both like uh, obscure horror movies so we kind of. We kind of have like stuff, nerdy things that we share, and then nerdy things that we have of our, you know, that we already know of and stuff like that. So we kind of share nerdy things. <laughs> basically. That's really cool. It's, I mean, it's cool that you can have, you know, I mean, again, I think, uh, it is you know, great. <laughs> balance of having things that you share and having things that are just yours, I think, is really important. I mean, another reason why I think I'm single is because I, I, I am very like picky about who I spend my time with. Like I. I'm not somebody who enjoys going out with people just for the sake of going out with people. Like I, and like when I say going out with people, I don't mean, you know, dating. I mean, just friends. Like I would rather spend time with people that I really connect with and click with. And so if I get invited out by some people that I barely know, I'd rather just spend a night in. Like I like my own company. I'm quite independent um so I think I I would want somebody that didn't have you know that yeah I had independent yeah yeah that I had I had things in common with but they weren't constantly we weren't in and out of each other's pockets I think that balance for me would be really important I think that was just a really fancy way of saying I like being a (laughs) shut-in yeah (laughs) ouch (laughs) there's nothing wrong with it no, that's cool. Me and I like I'll shutting again, myself in my house. Tur- everything she said. I like turning my lights off in my house, locking the door, and just turning on Doctor Who and eating a bucket of ice cream. Well, you're not. That- <laughs> uh, 
you're not. What about, a... about you, Greer? <laughs> no, I mean, I like, and I think he should make the effort to like, because when you're when you're young and you're into nerdy stuff, like the temptation to lock yourself away with, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer or whatever, or the Avengers, and not socialize is really tempting. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I uh, this is coming from experience, but. You know, if you do, yeah, if you do make the effort to go out and socialize and go to parties and stuff, you know, sometimes it's kind of boring and you don't meet people you click with. Sometimes you do, and it is always worth making the effort. Sometimes, yeah, you're right. I agree. Sometimes <laughs> when like my brother, who is like a complete shut in, he only interacts. He only has like three friends that he interacts with, and <laughs> um, one day he asked me if I could take him to uh, the Midnight release of GTA V. It was a couple weeks ago, and I said, you want to go out and do something with strangers in public? <laughs> and uh, well, he said, you? yeah. <laughs> I you said, oh, no, we didn't end up going, but uh, because my parents did not want us in the car out in the city at midnight, so. <laughs> and <laughs> and it, it wasn't as much that as it was. It was a school night for him, so. No, well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah. I'm like, but, are you are you serious? You want to go out in public? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's good. That shows progress, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, he the he goes out and like he'll go out to the store with me and stuff, but he rarely like goes to stuff like that, like midnight releases where it's just full of strangers, like people he does not know. So, and, and I think that's more of the nerd in him. He just likes sitting up here and playing games and you know. What? One thing that I've noticed about the kind of Tugwatug fan community is that there is like, you know, I've just noticed this through kind of talking to people and meeting people. There is a kind of abundance of, you know, people that have varying degrees of mental health issue. And one of the most common ones is um, Asperger's syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean, that, you know. Well, I think, um, I mean, I, I hate to sound like I'm generalizing, but. I don't know. It's like a lot in the nerd community, like a lot of people and are just, they have those problems, you know? And that's, I think, well, for me, I, I have like, a, I have a few mental things, like not Asperger's, but for me, I think that's why I became a nerd or a shouldn't because like, it's just more acceptable that way. We're more, we're more accepting of those things. Like, you know, you know some people have autism, some people have Asperger's. It doesn't matter. In the nerd community, you can just, you know, be inside and still be accepted, you know? It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think it's, you know, a tremendously comforting thing. It's why I'm so glad that I discovered, you know, the internet and fan communities, you know. Yeah, at the same here. I mean, I, yeah, I, I think, yeah, in, in the nerd community, you know, your gender doesn't matter or it certainly shouldn't matter, you know how you look, you know, your your age, your level of kind of experience, you know, in relationships, your mental health issues, you know, whatever they may or may not be. Yeah, you're, you know, if you're passionate about the same things, you can all connect. And yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I yeah. think that's a wonderful, valuable thing. And I mean, I... And plus a lot of, and sort of, some of nerd culture sort of depends on those things. Like, in, like... I, I can't remember right now if it's Asperger's or autism where it's like you're really obsessed with something and it's just like you stick to it for a long time. That's like what nerds are about. Yeah. You know? well, yeah That's sort of what we're founded on, you know? Well, Asperger's is on the um it's on the autistic spectrum. So like basically yeah, like yeah. I get or, it. If you're autistic, you're much more it's it's probably much more kind of severe. Um whereas Asperger's is more it, it's just a kind of socially, you know Yeah. I mean, like, my brother who has it, I mean, he does go through obsessions. Like, he's obsessed with Journey right now for some reason. Oh, really? Oh, that's so sweet. And, uh, that's pretty cool. I've seen them in concert. Yeah, he's... <laughs> really? That's, that's his that's obsession cool. lately. And, uh, but yeah, that's that's an AS thing. Because I know... Because he has a bunch of AS friends, or he used to, in the early stages of high school and middle school. And that, that was, and then I, I knew those friends too. And I had a bunch of those friends and that was, that's a thing. It's yeah, not like, generalizing. It's a thing. <laughs> no, it isn't. When I was younger, um, I had a lot of problems. Like I didn't talk a lot and I was really, really guarded and everything. So I was, my mom put me in like special ed classes. So I was surrounded by those kinds of people and stuff. So I sort of, 
I, I mean, that, granted, that was a long time ago, so I don't remember that much, but, you know, I sort of know about those kinds of, like, that area with people and stuff, you know? And they, they can really stick to things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, what I realized when I was a support worker was that, because, um, I, well, I mean, I still am a support worker, but when I was a support worker for um, people with, like, you know, autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, is that, you know, like, and particularly as well, because I was studying it at the same time, I was... Um, I I was getting like a qualification in health and social care and I realized that I'm probably mildly on the Asperger spectrum you know I I had to learn how to respond to things in the kind of socially acceptable way um it's like it's it's like that greeting when someone when someone meets you or you see someone you know in town and they're like hey you're right I used to think that people actually wanted to know how I was. So I would go off into these kind of reams of how I actually was doing. And then I realized that, you know, that's just a greeting. People don't actually want to know how you're doing. They just want to know. <laughs> I think we all learned that at some point. I think that's yeah. just your personality. I think that's just you being you, uh, <laughs> which is not you. an insult. No, I, like, no, I like the way you said that, you being you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think... But I, th- I think I, you know, am probably mildly on the autistic spectrum. Like, just, you know, various little things. Like, uh, yeah, not and, until I know people really well, not knowing how to, you know, respond to them socially in ways that seem to be instinctive for other people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I kind of uh, blanked too. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that probably is something that is very common in nerd culture, and that's really, you know, in a way, that's really nice. It's nice that we're all kind of in it together. Yay! Yay! Got <laughs> I, I hope, God, I hope we didn't offend anyone. <laughs> no, I don't know. I we don't were know. treading very lightly there. No, I, I don't think, think so. Fine. I don't think so at all. I think, I think that was all perfectly acceptable. You might have offended Kanye West. I don't know. Yeah. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's pretty fucking hard not to offend Kanye West. I hope uh, Kanye West is not listening. <laughs> I hope he is, so I can tell him how big of an ass he is. You just offended <laughs> Kanye West. He Good. will now on, he will bitch. now go rant on Twitter about you. Good. I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> If Kanye West ranted about me on Twitter, that my life would be complete. Me too. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Mine wouldn't, because then you'd get hassled by fans and shit. <laughs> you'd hassle oh, like crazy people. That's really insane. Like you can insult like Justin Bieber, for instance, on Twitter, and you can get like death threats. Oh yeah. From his- mm-hmm. it's like, it's yeah, because people are freaking crazy. You I know? remember. Um, just this week, I think, um, there's this new artist called Lord. Her name is L O R D. I saw you a lot about it on Facebook. She Who is great. You? She's from New Zealand and she's 16 years old and she has a song that's on top of the charts right now. And she got death threats from Miley Cyrus's really hardcore fans simply because her song was above Miley Cyrus's on iTunes. Oh. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> God, people are just you can like, get death like, threats for anything. You literally I, can. Yeah, I was just gonna say you can get death you get death threats for like breathing. Yeah. <laughs> you breathe they, too loudly, I will kill you. I mean they really they are ten a penny on the internet death threats. Like people hand them out like candy. I mean it's scary. You're right. You're right. Like at this point, are they even threats anymore? Nah. Yeah, well, I mean that that's the th- that's the thing. Like, no, they are aren't really they're empty threats but at the same time they're fucking scary to get and they are serious like you know people shouldn't do it people shouldn't feel okay about doing it it's weird yeah weird it's it's really i mean well first of all like it's it's so it's it's so like exaggerated like what the hell like what would cause someone to really send out like a death threat and like mean it like well, how does like Miley Cyrus's song going under someone else's offended you so much that you want to kill someone else? Like, really? I, like, what I the heck? Get your life in order, dude. Well, yeah, totally. I mean, I think, I think it's just that combination of like, one, it's the internet, so you have that veil of you know not being face to face with them in a real world setting, and then I think 
you know, if you spend that much time on the internet, you can become kind of reclusive and obsessive and your emotions become more extreme. Well, your emotions for trivial things anyway become more extreme. And I guess it's just a combination of those two things. I mean, it's the kind of, it's like what Welshie said, it's the dark side of the internet. I mean, it's a dark side I mean, of the I, you, you can tell how long somebody has been sitting down on a computer stuck in their room for three days listening to One Direction by how <laughs> by how creative their death threats are. Like, if somebody, if some celebrity talks shit about One Direction, there will be a one a Directioner, like a really hardcore Directioner that is like, I will take a plastic knife and shove it up your nose and give you a lobotomy and then I will shit on your face and then, <laughs> you know, go on and on. And you can tell, like, that is just spiraling into insanity. And you can totally tell how long somebody has just been shut in their room by, that you know. That was quite descriptive, I have to say. <laughs> in that sense, but it was descriptive. It, it sounds like you might have actually heard that specific threat, or given it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, one, one thing that really gets me is that, like, I mean, and again, this is, this is a kind of, it's it's a far bigger problem or it's part of a far bigger problem I and mean, you know it's a gender issue and a feminist issue it is the hate women can get online for being unattractive yeah I mean, yeah. It's that just anywhere we're we we as like uh, a people like women we are not allowed to be unattractive you know because really, it's lazy or skanky or some shit like that so you know what i say to that i say fuck it and i you know, you don't have. You can look however you want to look. It doesn't matter as long Agreed. as you are happy with how you look. Agreed. I, I. It's just a shame the rest of the world doesn't think that way. I mean, I was thinking in particular of um. I don't know whether you've seen um. And they are, you know, the videos are undeniably funny. But it's a it's a British woman, like quite a youngish British woman, probably about my age. Um, who is you know she's very sort of heavy set and kind of you know she she has kind of you know a gap in her teeth and you know is not kind of conventionally attractive and she's a massive twilight fan and she does these big long i know her yeah yeah i know about her there she's, are loads. she's insane she i mean a she's, twilight fan that's insane surely you jest no it's that one i know who you're talking about that's the thing i know who you're talking about oh, no i mean no she's she seems she seems like an extreme personality um <laughs> But I mean, people tell her to kill herself, and she must. She must read this because she responds. Mm -hmm. That's another know. threat that, like, that's another empty threat that comes out a lot. It's like, just kill yourself, you know? Yeah. It, the the thing is, like, you hear it enough, like, you probably start to wonder, you know? I mean, that's what's so dangerous about it. That you know, it's just it weird stuff, and really worrying that anyone would feel comfortable enough to say that to another person mm. i mean like i kind of i use it sometimes when i'm like fucking around my brother if my brother says something dumb i'm like oh my god kill yourself and yeah, like we'll laugh about it that's the only time i really use it but yeah, you know I mean, like context wise that's that's completely i would never say it to somebody seriously no or online where your intention yeah can't be gauged i mean yeah. there's a big difference between you saying that to like your brother or like a mate and somebody on youtube saying to this woman go and fucking kill yourself you fat waste of space yeah or oh, which you know yeah you hear and one day i'm gonna take that line you just said out of context like one day we're gonna have a huge fight and I'm gonna blackmail you, like, I'm gonna, like, make, like, a scathing political ad against you, like, a political-esque ad, and be like, Brian Killshaw, baby, 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 she said this, and it's like, kill yourself, you fat waste of space. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she's gonna start a smear campaign. Yes, yeah, smear campaign, that's what it's called, yeah. People should kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> you better get started on yours, Fran. Wait, Fran, say it that. again, I didn't get it that clearly. Just, oh no, hell no, 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 my, no, mine, I don't know what my smear campaign against you would be, Greer, I mean, everything you say is fairly inoffensive, it's more just absurd. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so then say she's crazy. Well, just, well, 
Yeah, I mean, I do anyway, but I could probably <laughs> use it in a smear campaign. I mean, well, just like when I'm talking to you and you'll suddenly you'll go off for about half an hour showing me pictures of roller coasters, like your favorite <laughs> roller coasters. <laughs> Speaking of roller coasters, Halloween Horror Nights started last week, or it was two weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Halloween yeah. Horror Nights at Universal, yeah. and I want to go, I've always wanted to go every year, but... That is legit exciting. Where is it again? Univer- it's in Orlando, but it's also in LA, where the other Universal is. You know what I think looks cool, actually, is, um, what is it? They're doing something at Disney World, where, like, all the villains are, they're having, like, villain rides or something. Oh, no I way. Keep, I amazing. keep seeing a commercial for it, and it looks adorable. Like, I, I bet it's so much fun. Hang so on, it, let me Disney, this. Disney does a Halloween thing, too. It's called it's called a Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party or something. And you can actually, like, go in in costumes and dress up and stuff. See, at Halloween Horror Nights, you can't wear costumes or anything because there are scare actors walking around and... Oh. Oh, right, if you okay. wear like a really as if a zombie costume with other people who are zombies walking around, like you don't want to like, you know, confuse them or whatever, you know. And uh, the thing is, like, it sounds like so much fun, but I like, and I'm a huge, huge fucking horror fan. But the distance of when you're watching it on TV versus actually being in a situation where somebody could like jump up behind you, like, I'm not sure whether I could take that. Like I hope I know I just... stuff like that can be pretty scary. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. Any, anything kind of interactive like that, I've always been slightly. Like, have you ever wanted to go inside like the Evil Dead movie? If you did, then you're in luck because they have an Evil Dead house. <laughs> yeah. See, I mean, in theory, wow. it sounds fucking cool, but it's just whether. I mean, it's almost like the way that I think like jumping out of an airplane would be cool. You know, yeah. parachute and all that but it's it's whether i could physically force myself to do it i want to go skydiving so badly i want to skydive and bungee jump and my parents think i'm absolutely nuts nuts. (laughs) people want to do it i would never no i was i was scared of bungee jumping for a little while because i saw an internet hoax video years ago when i was a kid of like some guy went bungee jumping and then a huge like alligator came and bit half of his body off when he got near the water and i thought that was real (laughs) how do you make a hoax video of that you like photoshop and you know very carefully after effects after effects (laughs) but it looked kind of real so i was scared but then i realized it wasn't real and i'm like oh okay (laughs) i mean like i i you know never say never like I don't think it's something that right now I would go out of my way to do, but I mean, yeah, maybe if I had the time and the money, if I was on vacation, yeah, I wouldn't be against it necessarily. Yeah. I would only do it if I knew I was like dying. Like if I had an incurable disease. <laughs> it would really? be your like, bucket list. You'd be on your deathbed. Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, if you're going to die, you might as well, you know, do something crazy. So there you why- go. It, why is it that that is your like deal breaker then, Georgia? Why is that something? I don't know, cause like I once well, I'm a little afraid of heights, and like I I don't know, that just seems terrifying to just jump out of a plane or go bungee jumping. That just seems really scary. No, it really it does. I agree. I suppose it's just the the fear versus the kind of thrill of it, and then whether in the moment you can force yourself to actually do it. The, I think the death it, rate in skydiving is surprisingly low. Like it's lower than you think it is. I because think most... they make you go through, like, classes that are, like, hours long before yeah. you... Well, that's, yeah, that's, I guess that's the other reason that sounds boring. <laughs> you guys ever surfed? No. I have, I used to boogie board I live, I, I live, I do, I used to boogie board when I was a kid, only, and, but the, the waves here on the coast, are, the coast that I'm on, like, they aren't really good for surfing at all, like, they never get big enough for surfing, so... See? I I went boogie boarding a lot when I was a little kid. I've been I went surfing once in February and it was awesome. I've never surfed before. No, I don't it's I don't know so, how. So it's just like well the thing is like I I went to like a little seaside town and I took a class um just because I wanted a holiday this year that didn't cost an arm and a leg. But like I would I would really recommend like if you just want to like get away for a couple of days like just saving up and doing like you know, like, going to the coast and doing a cheap surfing lesson, like, it, it's so much fun. There's, um, 
I'm gonna get back to theme parks again because there was I was watching a thing on a, I think it was a Travel Channel and it's like undiscovered things or or like really not very well known things in Disney World and they have two water parks at Disney World that are very well known but um one of them it's a uh, Typhoon Lagoon and they have a thing where you can sign up for a surfing class in their wave pool because their wave pool makes like these huge waves and oh. you can go like early in the morning and they'll teach you how to surf. Like, and it's in a controlled environment where it's like very safe, you know, yes. to teach somebody how to surf. That sounds awesome. Yeah. You should do something like that. It's probably cost an arm and a leg, but you know. Oh yeah. Almost certainly. Well, when you and me go to a theme park, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, God, what was I? But yeah, or yeah, Halloween Horror Nights. That's what we were talking about. You stoned? No, no. I was thinking about what we were talking about before skydiving because I was going to tell you about like the things that are at Halloween Horror Nights this year because it's really good. They have a Resident Evil house, which I'm like, oh, because it's based off the game, and I'm really uh. Resident Evil like is shit scary to play like so i can't imagine how much scarier it is they have resident evil they have evil dead this year they have the walking dead cool like for a horror fan it sounds like nirvana i think the whole theme this year is walking dead so like all around the park is decorated like the walking dead places and there's just zombies walking around everywhere the walkers well i mean it's not like it's gonna go anywhere we should go next year yeah It'll all be different next year, though. They changed a lot of the stuff up. Um, I think they also have American Werewolf in London and oh. Cabin in the Woods. Um, I wanted to ask you both. Are you going to MAGFest? Of course. I still don't know. I yeah. just have to get my ticket. We're waiting for like the group rate to be a good price. Ooh. But yeah, I am definitely going because Ooh. I want to see you guys. And I want to see Will. And, I, and if I don't, Will, she'll find me and kick my ass. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, guys, let's all go this year. I'm trying. I can't. I'm trying to find a job. You find me a job and I'll go. Yeah, I'll just come to America and find you a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, Someone I who's can... not from this country will find me a job. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're derbs. Um, that <laughs> South reference. Um, but yes, I, I am almost certainly going to go. And let's... Have, you, have you started saving up money and stuff? Uh, no. Um, you should but I, do it now. Well, I, I mean, what my plan is basically I'm going to do what I did with New York and just get, like, a month's worth of wages and just use that. Are you sure? Yeah. You sure that'll well, be enough? You have enough, you know. Well, a month, a month of wages to spend when I'm in America will be enough, and then the previous month's wages can go on my plane ticket. Yeah. I'll work it out. I, I will probably start saving. Your plane soon. ticket to my house. <laughs> oh yeah, Christ! I'm gonna come to you first. That's You're gonna why come you- to me first, and then. D- Otherwise, I, you, think you can I- come here even if I'm not going. You can still come here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aww. Then I'll be coming to your house, and then I'll be leaving to go to Magfest and leaving you behind. I feel wow. I feel perfectly fine about that. All right. Okay. Well, I will I will definitely come and see you, but you've got to try and come to Mag. I'm trying. Got to find a job. My time's running out. If yeah. nothing happens in I, like I the hope next, you can make it too. I hope you can both make it because it would be so much fun. I'm like slamming my head against the wall trying to find it's a funny. job. I really am. Well, I don't so... think that'll help, honey. <laughs> Oh, you never know. Stranger things have happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, really oh, good at banging your head on the wall. You're hired. There's money in that. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to set sail. I'm afraid. Um. Yeah, we gotta to go. <laughs> make like a tree and get out of here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi ho. That was the I, best joke of the entire show. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, totally not my joke. Totally stole it from Back to the Future. Um, but anyway, guys, I yeah, I don't really have anything to add. Um, I don't know about you two. Um, just go watch Agents of Shield. Sweet. Yeah. Let's it is. It is pretty good. Like for a first episode, it is good. Oh, what sure. I was saying before. That's your uh, homework for next week, by the way. <laughs> Okay, well, all right, okay, that is my homework for next week. Yeah, it'll be a quiz next week. Yeah. 
Next week, I will have insights the likes of which will make your head spin and your balls fall off. Wow. Well, it must have worked already because I don't have balls. Oh, wow. See? Yay. That's how smart I am. <laughs> Hey! Sorry, my dog's being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog wants this show to end now. He does. He's being a yeah, little brat. Hey! Dog just pissing oh, in the. All right, I have to go. I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, ta-ra. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.